What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall stock market and how this may affect Tesla and what my price prediction is for Tesla based off the news, the data, the technicals and what on earth is going on with the overall sentiments. Now before I break anything down about this though, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below. And deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed 7 free stocks, and any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just 12 days. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Tesla was down 2.17% for the day on Friday. And overall, we did see the overall market just slow down a bit after we did see such a big pump on Thursday. But the real question is what's going to happen for Monday? And right now, the data is suggesting the market might try to rebound. However, for Tesla, the overall strength of Tesla is slowing down based off some data I'm going to show you. So it seems like Tesla is going to enter a very critical level going into tomorrow and maybe even Tuesday. And that is possibly a retest of 183.5 if we do get the bounce. And Tesla has to break this if we want any chance at filling this gap. If Tesla fails at that level, there's a good chance Tesla has a lot of downside coming because we could be forming a head and shoulders. But to start us off, I want to talk about SPY and what's happening with the market first. SPY has a max pain of 394 for both Monday and Tuesday with a 2.08 and a 2.04 put to call ratio. This suggests to me that the market makers would benefit if they try to get the market to pump even more. But once again, I can't promise that because the last time this did happen, especially when max pain was at 400, the shorts doubled down. And the shorts are not as incentivized to double down right here because we have very few options expiring. It's nowhere near the level of quadruple witching or even the last week. But at the same time, once again, it would benefit the market makers to try to pump the market a little bit. On top of that, if you look at the overall uh, flow right here based off the put and call volume, there's actually quite a bit of put volume coming out for tomorrow and also for Tuesday on SPY. A lot of people are just shorting and shorting and shorting. The market makers would benefit if they try to pump the markets one more time. For Tesla, it's kind of the opposite. What else is interesting is... Uh, for the 24th, so this is not actually affecting Tesla on a day-to-day -day basis because Tesla does not have those zero data expiration options uh, the way that SPY does. But what you'll notice is the fact that the overall put volume for Tesla is very low compared to the call volume. So if more and more calls are being bought, depending on the news and other factors, this could lead to some bullish momentum for Tesla. We actually have a very low put-to-call ratio compared to SPY. So Tesla does have a bit of an edge to some degree, but the problem I'm seeing is when Tesla starts pumping, we start to see more shorts piling in. We start to see some selling pressure, which is actually counteracting this. And this is why Tesla's overall strength is starting to diminish a bit. Looking at the news, we did have some good news that came out. We have another full self-driving beta update that just came out. We have the release notes right over here. And you could see that people can enable their full self-driving beta by tapping control, autopilot, full self-driving beta. And then they're going to be able to like follow the instructions and use it with this new interface right here. The more updates that come out, the more likely it is to become better and safer. And to me, this is very, very awesome for the company going forward. But once again, you have to remember that there's going to be a lot of criticism that comes out as this does continue to happen. There have been a lot of updates which are very, very necessary. This one right here unifies vision and planning stack and off highway. And on top of that, it replaces the legacy highway stack, which is over four years old. So this is actually going to make it a lot more efficient with its camera, give it a lot better vision in these highway situations. And on top of that, it's also going to allow it for better maneuvers. This in turn is going to make it a lot safer in a lot of ways and also help it see the world in a much more efficient manner. Do I think this this whole like full self-driving technology is perfect? The answer is no. There are some risks involved if you are going to be using it, but there is still a lot of improvement and they're continuing to improve with their supercomputers. This is part of what makes Tesla very, very intelligent, very, very sophisticated, and very, very successful going forward into the future. 
Now, what else is very awesome is when you look at the inventory levels, they're continuing to drop as of yesterday. We're continuing to see Tesla's being bought up like crazy. This tells me that when Tesla has its earnings, very, very soon, within two months, Tesla has its earnings, we're most likely going to get a very, very decent amount of deliveries, in my opinion, at least for the USA, because we're consistently seeing the Teslas being bought up over and over and over again as the inventories continue to drop on a day-to-day -day basis. Tesla also dropped on low volume. That's once again a pretty decent sign because typically when stocks drop on high volume, there's a lot more selling pressure that's bringing the stock price down. But we're not actually getting that right now. This tells me that there are still some buyers trying to counteract it. And that's why Tesla did get a bounce off that 177 zone to get to about 180 uh, near the end of the day. So we did close above 180. That is a good sign technically. And on top of that, looking at uh, the short volume, it's continuing to respect the downtrend. It's only at about 54% of the total volume, which shows that there are still some healthy buyers out there for Tesla. But one thing that isn't as great is the price pairs ratio right now. This is starting to actually decrease in value, which means that Tesla is not ripping to the moon the way it was before, or at least over the last like couple of weeks. And if anything, this tells me that if Tesla does continue to maintain a ratio like this, it might not get the same like bullish price action that we saw from like the previous week, the last like couple of days. So it might actually see a bit of a slowdown and more sideways action because of this. The relative to the market, the whole market did actually slow down a bit on Friday. So it's not as surprising. But to me personally, when this tends to happen, we do tend to see some slowdowns eventually concur. So please be very prepared for that later on. There's not much else going on here, but just look at the previous earnings reports. Tesla does have a tendency of outperforming. I really want to wait to see how their margins actually hold up for the next earnings report. But overall, I think things are still looking pretty good for Tesla. Tesla is green 53% of the time on Monday. So the odds are favoring Tesla trying to close green. And overall, on Mondays, we tend to see Tesla actually push more by the third and fourth hours of the day. So Tesla is typically like a slow runner. It doesn't always push up very hard in the beginning. We tend to see it push up like in the very uh, beginning, the very open, then slow down by the second and third hours. Then it isn't until like the third to fourth hours where it really starts to push up a lot more on those green days. So please be ready for that. It is relatively slow compared to the market sometimes, but it still has some very, very good volume that tends to come out and lots of buying pressure. The short interest, or at least the amount of shares shorted was 16 million on Thursday. Then on Friday, it went up to about 18 million. So we saw an additional 2 million Tesla shares being shorted. I do believe that we're gonna see a big increase in the short interest later on. I don't know when, it might be after the FOMC meeting, maybe a little bit before, who knows, but depending on when it happens, this could lead to downside for Tesla later on. Now, I'm not talking about tomorrow, I'm talking about like for the next month, month and a half or so. Now, please remember we have the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. And as we approach it, we have Monday and Tuesday. So anything could really happen given the current situation affecting the banks. But given the data I just showed you, the odds are favoring the market trying to bounce a bit. Now, if we're bearish, this is just a, a big if, and I want you guys to be prepared just in case, make sure you watch 388.56 on SPY. That's the support that held us up from the re really, really nice double bottom right that we're trying to base around here. If it breaks below this, then you have to watch this 187 zone followed by one, um, not one, 387 followed by 385. And if that doesn't hold, there's 383, then 380. I don't believe SPY is going to drop that much, but be prepared for these levels just in case. And if we get a really nice bounce, there is this gap all the way up here in the 395s. I do believe it is possible for us to try to fill that gap before uh, the really big FOMC meeting. But in order for that to happen, we need a lot more volume and we need more buying pressure. The MACD on the daily chart and also the hourly are starting to actually turn more in favor of the bears. But this is exactly the opportunity for the bulls to try to step in. As long as SPY tries to hold 388, there's a good chance it could try to balance because we would be establishing technically a higher low than before. What else is worth noting is the triple Q. This is also showing some relative strength compared to SPY and the S&P 500 because tech is still holding up quite nicely. Tech is not crashing too hard compared to different sectors. Tech is holding up very, very nicely. The QQQ was only down 07 
That's, I'm sorry, 0.47%. Sorry about that, guys. And I believe it has the potential if it does actually bounce off 305. But if it fails off 305, we could retest like 303 first and then try to bounce. We do have the potential to try to get to 309. If that breaks, then we have 311 to about 313. We have major resistance right around this zone right here. I believe the Triple Q could pull back just a little bit on Monday, then try to get a really nice bounce. I'm really hoping for that, but once again, be prepared for anything just in case. But the odds are favoring that based off what I'm about to show you. On Apple, Apple is on the verge of getting a crossover on the daily MACD. She did hold 155 though, so that is a pretty good sign. If Apple could hold this 155 zone and try to close above it, there's a good chance she might try to fly for that 157. But if she fails at 155, there's quite a bit of downside to come after that. So it's a very critical level Apple is at. In my opinion, the odds are favoring upside a little bit more based off what happened last week and also based off the dollar. The do dollar actually dropped with the market as we're continuing to see banks fail. If the dollar continues to slide like this, this does increase the odds of the market trying to bounce. But the dollar has been getting a little bit weaker over the past couple of days. And if anything, if this trend continues, if we do see the dollar retest this like 103.4 area, it has bounced off there before, but that's a very important level to watch for. This tells me the dollar might have a little bit more downside to come. If that's the case, this could be a little bit bullish for the markets. The VIX is up almost 11%. That is insane. The reason this is important is because when the VIX is up over 10% in one direction, we have a tendency of getting an opposite reaction the next day, more than 80% of the time, right? I think it's well above 80% of the time, but this is basically telling me that the VIX will most likely pull back a little bit. The odds are favoring that on either Monday or Tuesday, most likely Monday. And what that means is why would the VIX pull back? Because the market might get a bounce. We might just get a bit of a bounce in the markets. We might try to see market makers try to prop up the market again for Monday to once again hurt shorts. And on top of that, we are seeing other signals suggesting that. Now, finally, for the end of the video, I want to talk about Tesla. What's going on with Tesla? I want everyone to be prepared for both the bullish and bearish cases because we are in a very critical state right now. We managed to hold 180, which is a good sign. But you have to remember the whole banking situation and other factors affecting the companies. With the banks right now, they're continuing to slide. We're continuing to get negative news and sentiment is continuing to shift. We're also getting very close to a major event and that's going to be the FOMC meeting. So here's what you have to know. If we're bearish on Tesla, if you are like so bearish, you think this is it, you know, Tesla failed on Friday, it's going to continue dropping. And you could even argue we're trying to form like a bear flag, but not a guarantee. But if you're bearish on Tesla, okay, you need to see this thing break below 180, break below this like 177 to 176 zone. If we actually fail around there, we're most likely going to retest this trend line around this 172 area. And if 172 fails, once again, that is quite a bit of downside. We're going to come all the way down to 168. Some very important levels to watch for. We also have this gap all the way down here. So if you do see Tesla drop below 177, which is very close to where we held on Friday, if Tesla fails there, if we make a new low, it's most likely going to fill the gap and come to the mid to low 170s, unfortunately. So make sure you watch this level very carefully. This is a very important support zone, this 177 zone. I'm also going to leave a marker here just so you guys know 177 is important. Now, if you're bullish on Tesla, if you think Tesla is going to push up more, what you're going to be watching for is volume to come and for Tesla to actually break above 180 and then push for 183.5. This is where Tesla saw some major resistance before. And this is where Tesla could be forming a right shoulder if this thing is forming, you know, a head and shoulders. It's a possibility, but we could actually get a retest of 183.5. But if you're very bullish, Tesla needs to break 183.5. If that happens, if we could break that zone, there's a good chance Tesla's going to try its best to actually fill this gap. It's going to try very, very hard. Uh, I can't promise you it will go all the way up there, but we could get very close, right? It's very, very possible. Given the fact that Tesla's relative strength is decreasing, however, what I'm predicting is actually different, somewhere in the middle between those two projections. What I think is going to happen is, considering the fact that we do technically have 
a bullish divergence that developed on Tesla, and also based off what we're seeing on the data for SPY, uh, the, given the data for like Tesla and the options chain, and also the different factors out there, I think the odds are favoring Tesla trying to push up a little bit. I think that we might gap down in the morning. We might see Tesla open around like 170 something. Then we might see some buyers step in and Tesla might fill its gap and then start pushing up and up all the way up to 183.5. However, considering the fact that Tesla's overall strength index is starting to slow down a bit, this would tell me that relative to the market, Tesla might not be outperforming it as much, which means we might see a slowdown. We might not see Tesla actually rip to the moon like it has before. And we're going to need a catalyst to do that. So I'm thinking that Tesla is going to get stopped around this 183 area. And we might actually close somewhere in the low 180s for a somewhat green day, in my opinion. Now, you also have to remember we have FOMC coming up. If the FOMC meeting does see another, like, a lot of excitement approaching it, this could drag Tesla a little bit higher, but I'm going to be watching this 183.5 area. Also remember that if the Fed pauses during the FOMC meeting, Tesla and the whole market might actually push up pretty hard and Tesla will have a good chance at filling this gap and continuing to go a little higher. But if the Fed gives us 25 basis points, they remain hawkish and talk about inflation and things like that, this will slow the whole market down and potentially cause another big drop, maybe even a crash. So we have to be very cautious after FOMC on Wednesday. But until then, my best bet... And I think the most likely possibility is Tesla's going to try to get a, a, a nice bounce and try to retest 183.5. Once again, be prepared for anything just in case. But I do believe that's most likely going to happen based off what we're seeing from SPY and based off the previous performance of Tesla and what the data is telling us. All right. Thank you all so much for listening. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell us to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.